Okay, it's no secret that you guys really like Skyrim, which is great because Skyrim is one of my favorite games of all time. One question that I've been getting a lot recently is how can I keep Skyrim from getting boring after 10 years of playing? Which is super valid. I mean, you can only create so many new characters before it becomes a sign of losing interest. But there's definitely a few things that I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to keeping Skyrim fresh. So today, that's exactly what we're going to be going over. And my goal is to give you guys at least one new idea to help make Skyrim feel new again. So if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, and let's get started. Anybody who's been playing Skyrim long enough knows this pattern. You start a new character with some ambitious goals, you play through a bunch of quests and a little bit of the main story, lose interest about a week later, and then start the whole process over again with creating a new character. This cycle is what kills the Skyrim experience for a lot of people, and some would say this is a clear sign that you've pretty much done everything there is to do in Skyrim. Well, I would argue that maybe you've just been a little tunnel visioned. After playing through Skyrim so many times, you've forgotten what it's like to explore a brand new world with hundreds of unknown possibilities. Look, you're not going to be able to make a time machine and experience Skyrim for the first time again. It's okay to accept that but I think the problem is linked to something completely different. Like I said before, when you create a new character, you already have an expectation and goal for what comes next. My first idea for you guys is to let go of your ambition. Rather than rushing to some objective or huge questline, take some time to live within the world. Stay at a village for a while and talk to the people living there. Do some mundane side quests you haven't tried before, like chopping wood or practice crafting weapons. When you take out these major goals you set for yourself, Skyrim becomes a lot less about checking boxes and much more of the immersive open world it was always meant to be. I also find it helps to do things like turning off the compass at the top of the screen and just following signposts or listening to directions from villagers. Not only does it keep you from staring at a minimap and not taking in the world around you, but it'll make your path feel a lot less linear. It's almost a way of forcing Skyrim to feel like a new game again. Because the only way to not have expectations is, well, to not expect anything. But maybe you've tried this before and it just doesn't work. Maybe playing Skyrim the way it was originally intended has gotten boring to you. Well, my second tip to you is to do pretty much the polar opposite of what I just said. That's going to be to set one huge goal for yourself, but rather than it being something boring like graduating the Bard's College with zero musical experience, set a restriction for yourself. One example could be the thief lifestyle, where you only make money by stealing and pickpocketing. Instead of dumping all your items on Bellathor to make fat stacks, you have to sneak into people's homes and steal their life savings. It's a pretty big restriction, but it will also make Skyrim feel a lot less straightforward and even challenging. The opposite of that could be a capitalist run, where you have to work for all the money you make. This means doing things like selling weapons you make from crafting, and finding the perfect enchantments to make the most septums. Your goal doesn't need to be money related obviously. For me, I've never even tried potion making in Skyrim before, so I'm currently doing an alchemy only run, which has proven itself to be pretty hard. Although restricting yourself in Skyrim certainly isn't for everyone, you would be surprised how much it transforms the game into something completely different. Next up, we have probably the most obvious tip, mess around with modding in Skyrim. There are a few mods that I think can really change the way you play, and you probably wouldn't expect some of them. The first mod I want to share with you guys is called Frostfall, which adds a changing temperature element of survival to the gameplay of Skyrim. Basically what it does is if you go to some cold, snowy, mountainous area on the map, your character will start to freeze. While it's an incredibly simple concept, it can add a lot of depth to your playthrough. Frostfall mixed with the campfire mod is like a match made in heaven. Now you can set up a camp on these icy mountains, and sitting by a fire is the only way to combat the cold. In the past, you probably didn't think twice about entering a new biome in Skyrim. Now the difference between taking the long way around a mountain, or the short and dangerous path through it can mean life or death. If you like the idea of adding more survival elements to Skyrim, the I Need mod is a great addition too. Basically, it makes it so you actually need to eat and drink water to survive, which will require you to learn how to cook. And that also meshes really well with the campfire mod too. There are tons of really great survival mods out there if you need to mix it up a bit, and I highly recommend you check them out. And finally, my last tip for you guys you probably weren't expecting, but maybe it's time to try a new game. Look, I love Skyrim as much as the next guy, 
but we still have a ridiculously long wait before we can finally play Elder Scrolls 6. In the meantime, if you're a Skyrim fan, here are a few games that I think are perfect for scratching that itch. Valheim is a Norse Viking survival game that utilizes crafting, building, fighting huge bosses, and so much more that is clearly inspired by Skyrim. I honestly couldn't think of a game that better resembles the vibe that Skyrim gives me, so if you like the idea of Skyrim mixed with Minecraft, Valheim is absolutely the game for you. Next up, we hear these two games compared all the time. The Witcher 3 is an excellent replacement for Skyrim. If you like the storytelling, lore, and world building of the Elder Scrolls, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is just as strong in these areas. There's not much I can say that hasn't already been said, it's just a great game and you should definitely check it out. And last but not least, if you like the feeling of getting lost in an open world like Skyrim, Breath of the Wild has probably the best open world design out there in my opinion. While it lacks the mature nature of Skyrim, it's definitely got the heart, so if you haven't given it a chance, you definitely should. At the end of the day, if you open up your mind a bit, Skyrim can really become a completely fresh experience. While there's definitely nothing wrong with the game starting to feel stale, Skyrim has more potential to break out of the mold than most games. So try some of these tips, mix a few together. Who knows, you might just fall in love with Skyrim all over again. Real quick guys, I'm going to be doing a chill Skyrim stream over on Twitch tonight at 6 Eastern time. It's going to be my first live stream, so it'll also be my first time using Facecam. So if you want to pop in and say hi, my Twitch name is ApoxFox, and I'd love to see you tonight at 6. If you can't make it tonight, I'll be streaming Skyrim and some other games a few days a week, so make sure to follow me on Twitch to see when I go live. With that being said, thanks so much for watching, keep on gaming to the fullest, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.